Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on House Bill 4102. And reluctantly, I rise to oppose uh, the omnibus budget. But I do, in all sincerity, um, appreciate the work that was put into this budget by the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, who I believe um, uh, is trying to do the best that he can and the best that um, uh, we are allowed to do under the current budget constraints. He's been a generous um, person and listened to our arguments, and I think he's done a great job, as well as the subcommittee chairs that I've worked with who have allowed Democrats an opportunity, I believe, to have um, a discussion about this budget and more input than I think we've seen in the last few years. Um, unfortunately, the budget isn't quite there yet. Um, I rise to oppose this for a couple of specific reasons, but one in particular, the budget is not in balance. Um, despite the fact that uh, we are putting in significant amount of resources to cover the enormous enrollment in Healthy Michigan, we did hear testimony in the Appropriations Committee that the enrollment has already exceeded the projections that we had when we put the supplemental in, and at this point, uh, the money that we have in does not cover the obligations that we have. So number one, the budget at this point is currently not in balance. Number two, the, I think the kind of uh, unfortunate social engineering that we saw in the budget on the floor here today um, is a reason to oppose this budget, as well as uh, the amendment I spoke to earlier about the uh, BOGI budget boondoggle and spending money on the Senate office building when we should be set spending money on priorities like education, health care, and public safety. But it's not so much um, you know, what we're cutting in this budget, but some of the things we are funding and some of the things we're doing in boilerplate language. And I would refer to uh, my colleague from East Lansing who offered an amendment to strip funding for this continued charade of a lawsuit um, at the Supreme Court and our Attorney General continuing to pursue this when it's obvious that the people of Michigan want our tax dollars spent in different ways. Um, Mr. Speaker, I think we are setting up structural problems for next year by not fully addressing the issue of having the resources to draw down all the dollars we need for Medicaid, um, whether it's the health insurance claims assessment or not being able to offer the use tax next year as the federal government has said we aren't. By not addressing it this year, we're looking at an even bigger budget hole next year. So Mr. Speaker, as we continue to go through the process, uh, I look forward to working with members of the other side and the chairman of both these committees as well as yourself and other members to make sure that we can get this budget in a place that I think we can have broad uh, bipartisan support. Uh, that would be the first time we've had that in the last four to five years. Uh, but we've got some, not a long way to go, but a significant um, obstacles to overcome to get there. So I appreciate the work that's been done, but at this point cannot support this budget and urge my colleagues to reject it at this point and go back and continue the work so we can get something that everybody can support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Dillon. The clerk will tally, display, and announce the vote. Mr. Speaker, on the question of final passage of House Bill 4102, there are 59 aye votes and 51 nay votes. A majority of the members elected and serving having voted therefore, the bill is passed. Thank you.